V. I. Lenin. The Itch. C. Footnote 1. Written, February 22, 1918. First published, Pravda No. 33, February 22, 1918. The Evening Edition, published according to the Pravda text. Source, Lenin's Collected Works, Progress Publishers, Moscow, Volume 27, 1972, pages 43 to 47. The itch is a painful disease. And when people are seized by the itch of revolutionary phrase making the mere sight of this disease causes intolerable suffering. Truths that are simple, clear, comprehensible, obvious and apparently indisputable to all who belong to the working people are distorted by those suffering from the above mentioned kind of itch. Often this distortion arises from the best, the noblest and loftiest impulses merely owing to a failure to digest well-known theoretical truths or a childishly crude, schoolboyishly slavish repetition of them irrelevantly, people don't know what's what. But the itch does not cease to be harmful on that account. What, for example, could be more conclusive and clear than the following truth, a government that gave Soviet power, land, workers control and peace to a people tortured by three years of predatory war would be invincible. P is the chief thing. If, after conscientious efforts to obtain a general and just peace, it turned out in actual fact that it was impossible to obtain this at the present time, every peasant would understand that one would have to adopt not a general peace, but a separate and unjust peace. Every peasant, even the most ignorant and illiterate, would understand this and appreciate a government that gave him even such a peace. Bolsheviks must have been stricken by the vile itch of phrase making to forget this and evoke the peasants most legitimate dissatisfaction with them when this itch has led to a new war being launched by predatory Germany against overtired Russia. The ludicrous and pitiful theoretical trivialities and sophistries under which this itch is disguised I have pointed out in an article entitled The Revolutionary Phrase, Pravda, February 21st. I would not be recalling this if the same itch had not cropped up today, what catching disease, in a new place. To explain how this has happened, I shall cite first of all little example, quite simply and clearly, without any theory if the itch claims to be theory it is intolerably and without erudite words or anything that the masses cannot understand. Let us suppose Kaliui, footnote 2 in order to kill a tyrant and monster, acquires a revolver from an absolute villain, a scoundrel and robber, by promising him bread, money and vodka for the service rendered. Can one condemn Kaliuf for his deal with a robber for the sake of obtaining a deadly weapon? Every sensible person will answer no. If there is nowhere else for Kaliui to get a revolver, and if his intention is really an honorable one, the killing of a tyrant, not killing for plunder then he should not be reproached but commended for acquiring a revolver in this way. But if a robber, in order to commit murder for the sake of plunder, acquires a revolver from another robber in return for money, vodka or bread, can one compare, not to speak of identifying, such a deal with a robber with the deal made by Kaliuf? No, everyone who is not out of his mind or infected by the itch will agree that one cannot. Any peasant who saw an intellectual disavowing such an obvious truth by means of phrase making would say, You, sir, ought not to be managing the state but should join the company of wordy buffoons or should simply put yourself in a steam bath and get rid of the itch. If Kierensky, a representative of the ruling class of the bourgeoisie, i.e., the exploiters, makes a deal with the Anglo-French exploiters to get arms and potatoes from them and at the same time conceals from the people the treaties which promise, if successful, to give one robber Armenia, Galicia and Constantinople, and another robber Baghdad, Syria and so forth, is it difficult to understand that this deal is a predatory, swindling, vile deal on the part of Kierensky and his friends? No, this is not difficult to understand. Any peasant, even the most ignorant and illiterate, will understand it. But if a representative of the exploited, oppressed class, after this class has overthrown the exploiters, and published and annulled all the secret and annexationist treaties, is objected to a bandit attack by the imperialists of Germany, K, 
can he be condemned for making a deal with the Anglo-French robbers, for obtaining arms and potatoes from them in return for money or timber, etc.? Can one find such a deal dishonorable, disgraceful, dirty? No, one cannot. Every sensible man will understand this and will ridicule as silly fools those who with a lordly and learned mean undertake to prove that the masses will not understand the difference between the robber war of the imperialist Kierensky, and his dishonorable deals with robbers for a division of jointly stolen spoils, and the Kaliuev deal of the Bolshevik government with the Anglo-French robbers in order to get arms and potatoes to repel the German robber. Every sensible man will say, to obtain weapons by purchase from a robber for the purpose of robbery is disgusting and villainous, but to buy weapons from the same robber for the purpose of a just war against an aggressor is something quite legitimate. Only mincing young ladies and affected youths who have read books and derived nothing but affectation from them can see something dirty in it. Apart from people of that category only those who have contracted the itch can fall into such an error. But will the German worker understand the difference between Kierensky's purchase of weapons from the Anglo-French robbers for the purpose of annexing Constantinople from the Turks, Galicia from the Austrians and Eastern Prussia from the Germans, and the Bolsheviks purchase of weapons from the same robbers for the purpose of repelling Wilhelm when he has moved troops against socialist Russia which proposed an honorable and just peace to all, against Russia which has declared an end to the war? It must be supposed that the German worker will understand this, firstly because he is intelligent and educated, and secondly because he is used to a neat and cultured life, and suffers neither from the beuse and itch in general, nor from the itch of revolutionary phrase making in particular. Is there a difference between killing for the purpose of robbery and the killing of an aggressor? Is there a difference between a war of two groups of plunderers for a division of spoils and a just war for liberation from the attack of a plunderer against a people that has overthrown the plunderers? Does not the appraisal whether I act well or badly in acquiring weapons from a robber depend on the end and object of these weapons? On their use for a war that is base and dishonorable or for one that is just and honorable? Akai the itch is a nasty disease. And hard is the occupation of a man who has to give a steam bath to those infected with it. P.S. The North Americans in their war of liberation against England at the end of the 18th century got help from Spain and France, who were her competitors and just as much colonial robbers as England. It is said that there were left Bolsheviks to be found who contemplated writing a learned work on the dirty deal of these Americans. End notes. 1. This article was written by Lenin in connection with the opposition, expressed by the left communists at a meeting of the Central Committee of the RSDLPB, on February 22, 1918, to acquiring arms and food supplies from Britain and France for purposes of defense against the German imperialists. When the Council of People's Commissars discussed the question on February 21, the left socialist revolutionaries oppose all the use of aid from the Allies and the following resolution was passed, in view of the disagreement concerning the negotiations with the Allied powers for supplying the country with food and military equipment the meetings hall be adjourned for the groups to consult among themselves. Lenin was not present at the discussion of this question in the Central Committee on February 22, but he sent the following statement. To the Central Committee of the RSDLP please include my vote in favor of accepting potatoes and arms from the bandits of Anglo-French imperialism. By six votes to five the Central Committee passed a resolution in which it acknowledged that it was permissible for the purpose of arming and providing the Revolutionary Army with the necessary supplies to acquire such supplies from the governments of capitalist countries, while maintaining complete independence in foreign policy. After the vote Bucker intended his resignation from the Central Committee and the editorship of Pravda. In addition, eleven left communists Lomov, Apakov, Uritsky, Bukharin, Bubnov, Pyatikov and others submitted a statement to the Central Committee charging the Central Committee with capitulating to the international bourgeoisie, and stating that they would conduct extensive agitation against the policy of the Central Committee. The same day the question of obtaining arms and food supplies from the Allied powers was again discussed, 
this time by the Council of People's Commissars, which decided in favor of obtaining them. 2. Kalei FIP, 1877 to 1905, a member of the combat group of Tl Socialist Revolutionary Party, took part in a number of terroristic arts, on February 4, 17. In 1905 he assassinated the Governor General of Moscow, the Grand Duke S. A. Romanov, uncle of Nicholas L. L. He was executed at Schusselberg on May 10, 23.